Welcome back. This is tutorial number four, I think, for blender volume shading. Today we're going to look at smoke. Here's an example of what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. This is not a simulation tutorial. I'm not going to be telling you all the aspects I can about the smoke simulator. However, when you use the smoke simulator, it creates certain attributes that can be used in your nodal setup. And since we already have this basic volume shader, I'm going to show you how to use that with the attributes that the smoke simulator is going to create to texture your smoke, to give it the right material. Now note that I have the cycles render enabled, not the internal blender renderer. I also have this separate window in the lower right corner where I can use, uh, that I can use for my cycles previewing so I don't gobble up all the processor uh, trying to preview for this huge window when I really don't need it. Now, whenever I work with simulations, personally, I like to have my domain, the origin of my domain, be on the bottom. I also like it to sit on the grid. Well, my origin right now is on the grid, but my cube is not. So if I go into tab mode, G, Z, 1, moves it up one blender unit. And now it is sitting right on the grid. And now I can create, say, a plane, scale it up a bit. Control A to apply scale to that. So now it's now, instead of having a scale of 10, it has a scale of 1. Now if I scale up my domain, it's just going to sit on top of that plane. You will notice, if I scale this up, say, four units, and I move my camera around, I'm inside the cube here, uh, you see this flickering that goes on. And that's happening because my cube is perfectly intersecting with the plane, and that's a problem. So I'm going to select my cube in GZ.001. So it's just barely above it. You can't even tell when you look at it, but you can tell if you move the camera around, it's no longer doing the flicker. We no longer have that perfect intersection that's gonna cause that trouble. Okay, so I'm just gonna name these real quick. This is my floor, and this is going to be my domain. Now, what is a domain? A domain is simply where the simulation takes place. Control A, scale, apply the scale to that, by the way, before I forget. Uh, back in the day, if you were doing clouds, you had a cloud tank or a smoke tank. You would fill it with water and salt water or something, some kind of solution that would work for you. And then you would pour in paint or pour in ink and other tricks. You can still do this, of course. It's a lot of fun. But obviously, you're not going to be able to get any smoke or clouds outside of that tank. And that's what this is. Think of it as like a big glass box where everything takes place. Um, so that's my domain. You have to have a domain for this to happen, and everything that happens is really going to have to take place inside of that domain. So I'm going to make a smoke emitter inside of here. I'm going to make this small, control A to apply the scale, move it up a bit so it's clearly inside the domain. I'm going to go into my physics options, and I'm going to click smoke and choose flow. All right. And I'm just going to give it an initial velocity to go along the normal. So I checked initial, initial velocity, I set the normal to 2. And what that means is that, in this case, whenever you create a plane, the normal is going straight up or along the z-axis. And if I rotate along the y-axis, you'll see um, my z-axis is still pointing up because I'm looking at global axes. If I change it to the local axis, you'll see that blue is pointing a bit to the side, and that means, uh, that kind of helps to represent my normal. It's a quick visual sense to think of how your normal is moving. Move this along the x-axis, it'll shoot from the side, and uh, let me set my domain to actually be a domain. Click on Smoke, set it to be domain. Go to the beginning of your project and press Option A to play, and you'll see that smoke just billow in. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this just turn on for a second and then turn off. Now, the best way to do this by far is to use particles, but we are working quickly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to animate the density after, let's say, this far. Set a keyframe under density, advance one frame, change the density to zero. Now, in this case, what that means is it's, it's going to be, what's it going to be shooting out? Well, nothing. Now, sometimes it looks kind of like wind and stuff like that, and it can be a bit tricky. This isn't the best way to do it, but for our purposes, it'll work really well. And then it stops, basically stops shooting out smoke. Okay. Now I'm going to duplicate this, move it along the x-axis, rotate along the y-axis so it's shooting in there. And uh, maybe I'll even give this smoke some color. Maybe I'll give it a color red. And maybe I'll give this one a color yellow. And uh, let's see what that does. There we go. Now I've got two colors shooting into each other. And uh, I'll duplicate this one more time, move it along the x-axis, move it along the z-axis, and I will rotate it along the y-axis so it is pointing down. 
make sure everything's inside the domain. And I'll change this color to be, let's see, red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors. They'll all shoot into each other, do a little bit of a twirl, and do this nice little dance. Okay, that's a good start for us. I think that works for the purposes of this tutorial. And I think we'll only, uh, we're not even gonna save this or cache this or anything like that. We're not gonna worry about that too much. We'll just get these to a nice point where we can kind of play with the settings for the render. So if I go into Cycles Renderer now by pressing Shift-Z, you'll see nothing. And that's because, as you know, if you've been following these tutorials, you need to have a material, a volume material, to show what's going on. Well, how do we do that in this case? Well, first of all, the shading happens entirely with the domain. It's all about the domain. All the other things, these flows, if I had a collision, that all defines how the smoke moves, what colors it has, and all that kind of stuff. But you don't actually apply shaders to those. In fact, in the end, what you'll do is you'll actually hide those flow objects and uh, it won't really matter. But if I select the domain, right now it has a diffuse shade node applied to it. I'm gonna delete that. Shift A, and if you've been in this, uh, following these tutorials, you should have a group called the Basic Volume Shader. And you can apply that to your volume. All right, I'm noticing my, my lights giving me kind of weird results. Let me just move it somewhere else, there we go. And let me give a node for my lights and up the power, strength of my light there to maybe 1,500, so it's nice and bright, 2,500, there we go, nice. Make it a bit larger, For that just makes the shadows a bit softer, as you make it bigger and bigger and bigger, see those nice soft shadows there. Uh, it also gives it less direction, you don't exactly know where the light's coming from, the larger it gets. Uh, very useful for the sun shader, by the way, is that, sh that, that size attribute can do some interesting stuff. Okay, back to our domain. Now, how do I get the information from the smoke into my shader? Well, if you, you know, it's going to have something to do with density. And uh, by the way, for those who have not been following these tutorials, I'm just going to tab into my basic volume shader so you can see what it is. It's an absorption node and a scatter node being added together, and that's it. The trick here is that the color of both matches and the density of both matches. Okay, and that has one single input. So the way you do it in smoke, when you run a smoke simulation, it creates an attribute. One, in fact, it creates multiple attributes. One of them is called density. So you have to type in density and then output from the FAC into density, you get the smoke. Think of this just like those Vernoy textures or other textures we apply to this, it gives us a texture. And just like those textures, they don't look very interesting when they first come out because you need to tweak the actual density because this is going from zero to one. And usually we want it to go something like zero to 50. So go converter, math, give it a multiply, set that to let's say 50, which is gonna to be too much, but whoa, cool, look at that. Not very cool, but something. Let's set it to five, okay? Uh, there are other ways to do this now, other techniques, but this is a good basic way to do it. We're doing basic techniques with the basic volume shader. What about the color? Well, there's another attribute, and guess what it's called? Wait for it, color. That's right, you guessed it. If I plug color into color, I start to get some color information, though it's quite dark. But you can sort of see a little bit of blue, you can see a little bit of red, you see a little bit of yellow. One of the reasons it's so dark is simply because um, my multiply node is taking up a lot of space. And if I, uh, or it's making it really dense. If I make it lighter, I can see the colors easier, but then I can't see the smoke. Now there are ways to work with this. The most interesting way I think is to use an emit node, but that doesn't work very well with the basic volume shader. We're gonna do some, we'll do some tutorials later that show some kind of funky stuff you can do with clouds that make them seem basically non-realistic, but very, very interesting. Uh, what we can do here is we can apply a color node, hue saturation, let's up the saturation a bit, maybe three, and let's up the value, and do try five and see how that works. And that starts to give us some, you know, they're, they're more visible at that point. So I find this is a nice option. You can tweak these settings a lot until you get something that you feel like is gonna work for you. Here I'm not changing the saturation at all, but I am changing the value. 
I've got some interesting results. I also only have one light here right now, and if I just duplicate this real quick to get something along the lines of a three-point lighting setup. Let's set the backlight to be 1,000. Let's set this light to be 1,500. And then my key light will stay 2,500, but maybe I'll make the size a bit smaller. Whatever, real, real quick lighting setup there. Move that down a lot further and scale this up. And there you have it. I've got the smoke moving along inside my domain. And uh, you see color and we see density and we're applying it all together with our basic volume shader. That wasn't hard at all. And then you can start to focus in on your specific smoke settings, what you want it to do. Um, for instance, in this case, I might want to increase the divisions, the resolution of my smoke just as something is just like 64. I can probably do that right here in real time inside the tutorial. The more divisions you have, the slower it's gonna be. But we can see these, these lights, these uh, little bits of smoke flying into each other. We can see them crash into each other. And uh, render them out. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how the smoke simulator feeds its data into the node setup. So you can set up nodes for density. Here we have our color attribute and our density attribute. We're using a multiply node to control the, the range of the density from not from zero to one, but from zero to what? Zero to 10 in this case. And we're using the hue saturation value node to, in this case, just lighten up the entire thing so you can see these guys better. 25. I'm fiddling still. Stop fiddling. And we're using our basic volume shader, which from previous tutorials we learned how to incorporate into our default blend file so we don't have to remake this relatively simple, but still time consuming to a small degree set of nodes. It's all there in the basic volume shader. That's it. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys.